bond order. Another very important property associated with the covalent bonds. It is the number of bonds present between the two atoms in a molecular species. That's called the bond order of that particular bond. The bond order can be 1 or it can be 2 or it can be 3 and, and it can be fraction also. It can be fraction also. It will be fraction in case of those molecular species which are showing a phenomenon called resonance. Now, what is important is, as I have discussed just now with the bond, in the case of the bond length. Now, in this case, the bond order when the carbon are having a single bond between two carbon atoms is 1. When they are having a double bond, it's 2. When they are having a triple bond, it's 3. So, it's like this. Another important thing which we can associate with this is that suppose this is the example we are taking and we know their bond length that is 1.54 Armstrong's unit, 1.34 Armstrong's unit and 1.20 Armstrong's unit. So, what we notice in this case is that bond length is inversely proportional to bond order. Higher is the bond order, shorter is the bond length. More the number of bonds are formed between two atoms, more closer they will come to each other and therefore the, so the smaller will be the bond length. So bond order and bond length are, are inversely proportional to each other. There is one more property which is associated that is called bond enthalpy. Bond enthalpy. Now what is bond enthalpy? It is the amount of energy required to break one mole of the covalent bonds so that the molecule, the two bonded atoms are converted into their respective gaseous atoms is called bond enthalpy. The bond enthalpy is basically it's just the amount of energy we require to break the particular type of one mole of bonds so that the bonded atoms are converted into their gaseous atoms as I have explained it to you. We can take the example like we have hydrogen gas molecule. We want to give certain energy which is called bond energy or bond enthalpy so that these two hydrogen atoms which are bonded in this molecule are, are converted into their respective atoms. So the energy which we give is called bond energy or enthalpy for hydrogen molecule. Like in this case, this bond enthalpy or energy is approximately 436 kilojoule per mole. In a very similar way, in case of nitrogen molecule, we know nitrogen has a triple bond between the two nitrogen atoms. So when this nitrogen gas is given this amount of energy or uh, a large amount of energy of course is required in this case so that it, its two atoms are broken down into their respective uh, gaseous state. The amount of energy now spent is called bond enthalpy of nitrogen atom and that is very high and that is approximately more than 900, uh, it is approximately 930 kilojoule per mole. So this is what we find is that this is what is a bond enthalpy is amount of energy required to break one mole of the uh, particular type of bond so that the bonded atoms are converted into the gaseous state. Also another important thing associated with this. If suppose we have more than one type of the same type of bonds in the molecules, the amount of energy required to break them is an average bond, in, is average basically. Like I can give you the example from water. In case of water we know water will be having what? Two OH bonds. Now what will happen is, the first time whatever the bond energy we have given, what we get is, we get one hydrogen atom gaseous and we get another OH gaseous. Then the, this, this OH1 which we have got is another again given some energy so that we get O gaseous and H gaseous. Now this O, this first bond energy and second bond energy are not the same values. They are 502 and 427. So they are these values which are actually are not the same. So it means what? 
if we take just the average, can we take it as a 502? It's not. Can we take 427? It's not. So, in case of polyatomic molecular species or the in the case of the molecular species in which we have the same type of bond which is not present uh, more than one time uh, or more than one type, then in those cases what we do is we take the average of these two. So, that's why in case of this one, it will be the average of these two which is yours 929 divided by 2. So, this is how it becomes the average which is 460. 4.5 kilojoule per mole. So, this is now the called the exact bond energy of the OH bond in case of water molecule. So, this is how we find out the bond enthalpies or energies which are basically are required to break the, these covalent bond to their respective atoms. Another important thing. Now, this bond energy gives us again a very valuable information regarding the strength of the covalent bond. And we can clearly make out is that this covalent bond strength is directly proportional to its bond enthalpy. Higher is this enthalpy is higher will be the covalent bond strength. So, its covalent bonds strength is directly proportional to this enthalpy. So, larger is this value, stronger is the bond because more or more closer they will be, uh, uh, the atoms will be. Or how we can relate these three things uh, with the bond order and the bond uh, length like another thing. Remember, bond enthalpy is inversely proportional to bond length. And it is bond enthalpy is directly proportional to bond order. Higher is the bond order, higher is the uh, number of bonds that two atoms are having, more amount of energy is required, higher is the bond enthalpy. Smaller is the bond length, more closer the atoms are, more stronger the forces of attraction they are having, higher will be the bond enthalpy. So, this is how these three things are interrelated to each other.